So we need to have something that just gets you out of your state. So something, it could be raising your emotions, it could be dancing, it could, I want it to be physical so that it gets you out of, I know I came at you aggressive, but I want us, a lot of the times when we're going through the emotions of just our habits, we're just wired and a way to rewire that we almost have to, it's like if you had it back in the day when you had a CD, the CD is just kind of, it's on that track. Hi guys, so today we're going to be really talking and getting granular about kind of breaking down the habit of emotional eating and then also nighttime snacking, so looking at both of those. Um, hi, my name is Katie Chris. I'm a health and wellness coach and again, today we're really going to be, if you struggle with emotional eating, if you are, whether regardless of if it's stressed out, you eat, or if you're happy and you eat, or two, if you struggle with, and I'm gonna kind of pinpoint this specifically about nighttime snacking. So we're really gonna kind of look back at that and, and if we wanna reroute that, how do we do that? And what we're gonna focus on is kind of really creating a four step kind of pattern interrupter approach so that you don't have to, you don't go through this. You don't have that kind of where you eat all day so dang great and then you self-sabotage yourself at night by just kind of like eating garbage basically and then you feel worse about yourself and you go to bed just filling your body with really crappy stuff and then you wake up bloated or you wake up just not feeling your best and that kind of just, it starts to spiral. Or two, if you just wanna get away from just, again, if you're stressed out, you eat. If you are bored, you eat. If you're happy, you eat. Kind of not linking so much emotion with our food. And so how do you do this? There's four steps to it. So the first step is understanding, okay, what is the trigger to this habit? Because honestly, these are all your emotional eating and your nighttime kind of sugar cravings or salty cravings, whatever it looks like for you. These are just habits. These are just behaviors. And they're usually triggered by something. Um, specifically, let's talk about kind of the nighttime snacking. A lot of it is just triggered by the time of night. It's just you have this habit of, okay, you eat dinner, then maybe you go watch a, uh, a Netflix show, and then 8 p.m. hits, 9 p.m. hits, and it's that trigger of, oh, it's, it's 9 p.m., okay, in an hour or so, I'm gonna be going to bed, okay, uh, let's have a snack. Or it's the trigger too of you're just kind of watching the Netflix show and your body might just subconsciously be like, oh, I'm, since I'm watching a show, I'm supposed to be eating something. So the first thing that you do is what is the trigger? What is the trigger that leads to this habit that I want to break? Number one is trigger. Now let's kind of link that to the emotional eating aspect as well. What triggers the emotional snacking? Again, it comes down to, it's a lot of the times, it's when I feel stressed, when I feel happy, when I feel bored. I want you to get really specific and understand exactly what is the trigger to that emotional eating. And so the next thing, once you kind of understand, okay, this, these are the triggers, this was what triggers my, my behavior, number two gets exciting. And this is where you kind of get a little bit more specific, but you need a pattern interrupter. <laughs> I came hard at you, but I hope when you were listening, it jolted you up. That's a pattern interrupter. So we need to have something that just gets you out of your state. So something, it could be raising your emotions. It could be dancing. It could, I want it to be physical so that it gets you out of, I know I came at you aggressive, but I want us a lot of the times when we're going through the emotions of just our habits, we're just wired and a way to rewire that we almost have to, it's like if you had it back in the day when you had a CD, the CD is just kind of, it's on that track and it just keeps playing the same song, same song. What we wanna do with a pattern interrupter is have something so aggressive, like me just yelling at you right now, it scratches that record a little bit, it just scratches it enough. And we wanna scratch this CD record enough that when you kind of go back onto that track, it's completely different. You don't even hear the same song again. Um, so for instance, let's go back to a nighttime snacking. So the trigger is it's either a time, it's either a, um, a, a thing that you're doing, like watching Netflix, what is the trigger? And then when you're doing that, when you know, when you're like, okay, 
it's 8 p.m. here's the trigger or or even two let's say it's like specifically when you reach for the fridge that's the trigger that you're gonna do nighttime snacking you're trying to get out of this this is where you just have to okay what is your pattern interrupter when you hit that trigger do you run around the kitchen island five times and it's just saying like oh shoot I open up the fridge let's run around um, if it's a time trigger, do you set an alarm on your clock? And when you, when 8 p.m. hits or 9 p.m. hits, whenever kind of your nighttime snacking is, do you go and do 10 push-ups? Do you, um, one of my clients said that like just walk all the way down to the basement and then come back. I want it to be a physical pattern interrupter um, because a lot of the times when we're going through our habits that we're in our head, a lot of the times and so I want us to get back into our body and to just disrupt the state that we're in I'm sure I'm moving way too much I'm sure this mic is just like going crazy and you're like this sound audio quality is awful Katie but I want it to be something where you get out of your head you get out of your habits and back into your body and that's just it's changing up the state just a little just enough for you to be like okay what is the action that I want to do next and so again, step one is understand your trigger. Step two is a pattern interrupter. Uh, <laughs> I, use, I use loud noises. You might not wanna be doing this at night, but again, it's just these loud things that just get you out of your kind of state that you're currently in. And so this could be noise. It could be physical movements. It could just be like running around the kitchen island five times, like whatever it is for you, that's just a little bit uncharacteristic and it just gets you out of your old state and into a new kind of more empowered state. Again, that's why I want it to kind of go into your body because I we, we feel power in our body. Now, number three is what is the empowered kind of behavior that you want to replace your old behavior with? Um, so this is where this gets a little bit, it's, it's kind of up to the interpretation of what you want to be doing. So again, let's go back to the nighttime snacking. Let's say um, you just want to eliminate nighttime snacking altogether. Um, what is then your replaced behavior? Because I don't want it to, I, I want you to replace this behavior of nighttime snacking with something else so that you're not just sitting there and you're like, I can't snack. I'm watching Netflix, I can't snack, I st can't snack. I just ran around the island, but I still am, all I'm thinking about is food. Let's replace it with another nourishing, nourishing activity. Because here's the thing about kind of, it, it could be with nighttime snacking, and it's also, again, linked back to this emotional eating as well. A lot of the times, it's when you are kind of quote unquote hungry at night, it's not really an, a physical hunger. It's not, and it's not that you didn't eat enough food, you didn't have enough kind of nutrients, and, and maybe it is. So this is just kind of something to check in with yourself and say, okay, is this a physical hunger or is this an emotional hunger? Nine times out of the 10, if you're eating enough throughout the day, it's going to be an emotional hunger. And so what we can do to replace that behavior is that we don't need food to replace it. It's not about having healthier nighttime snacks. It's asking us, okay, what is my body craving right now? If I'm craving sweets, what kind of, what is my body wanting to feel nourished? I'm asking for kind of a, that good serotonin feeling to kind of make me feel really good. So maybe instead of the nighttime snacking, it's replacing it with, and I call this your nourishment men menu of, okay, what are other activities that will make your body feel really, really good? Is it going and taking a shower because you know it's nighttime and your body's just kind of wanting to wind down and feel really, really luxurious and, and, and it's using food right now to f like boost your serotonin to feel good, but like we can change that just a little bit. Um, is it having a, a nighttime massage with your partner? Is it replacing it with, and, and, and even too, it, it, like let's say you do want to have a nighttime snack okay it's just replacing maybe not having um, the chocolate covered raisins it could be frozen blueberries instead so it's just step three is just what is your desired kind of um, behavior change that you want to replace your old behavior with because again the reason why we want to replace it is I don't want you to feel like you're in a deprivation state because when we feel deprived from like nighttime snacking which feels really good to our body that's when we're gonna feel like we're just like taking things away and our body does not want that our brains like ah screw you Katie for taking away the wine at night 
I want us to replace it with something. And then the fourth and last step is I want us to kind of encourage this behavior and it, like we're gonna sound like dogs, we're gonna sound like kids, but I want us to reward ourselves say good job to ourselves, acknowledge us, and kind of increase the serotonin that's going and releasing in our brain by just acknowledging us and kind of, it, it's, it's that, it's like when you're, tra you're training a child to potty train. Um, or Ryan's uh, niece is being potty trained right now. And it's just kind of that, that positive encouragement to say like, yay, like good job, Eliana, you went to the bathroom on the toilet. And like, she gets so excited. And that's what you need to be doing for yourself specifically too. Because this is where like we're working with our brain right now. This isn't about kind of saying I, I have to have willpower. Why am I so late? Like why do I do this at night? Okay, let's train ourselves to do this. And the last thing to do is I want you to increase the feel good hormones that are going through your body and just congratulate yourself for doing the, the desired behavior that you want to be doing. And so this could, again, this could, easily be go to the mirror and just give yourself a high five um, if anybody's kind of familiar with mel robbins high five challenge that's a really good way to just kind of again it's confirming to your brain this is it's a mental game it's saying good job katie good job daniel good job michaela <laughs> shout out to my siblings um, or it could be also too of just like there's there's strength in putting your hand over your heart and kind of um, activating the vagus nerve, and that um, kind of makes, kind of increases the dopamine that's going through your body as well. And it could just be like, thank you for doing this. Whatever it looks like for you, whatever works the best for you. Um, so these are the four kind of pattern interrupters, changes for changing a habit. So we specifically talked about changing the habit of kind of nighttime snacking and emotional snacking. So I, I really do feel like both of these are kind of on the same wavelength. You can do this for any type of habit that you want to change. If you want to change kind of um, sleeping in, if you want to change um, being short, really short with your um, kids, if you want to change um, not being late to work. These are the four, four steps that you can use to create lasting change. So again, it's not about, it's not a willpower problem. It truly, truly is not. And I, I feel like that's, that is what's told of us when we can't eat a certain way or move our bodies a certain way. It's that we're lazy, that we're a failure. And it's, it's not that. What we can start to do is use psychology, use neuroscience to reprogram our brains so that we actually show up the way that we want to be showing up. So friends, I want you to put these, find one habit that you want to change. It could be big. It could be, it could be small. It doesn't matter. Choose one habit and try this out for the next seven days. Just, just, Stick to yourself, challenge yourself for the next seven days. Um, if this was helpful, if you thought this was kind of insightful, please share this with any of your friends or family members who would find this really useful. Again, the mission over here, my mission is to really just, health and wellness is not about willpower problems anymore. I want us to stop feeling so negative about ourselves and feeling like we have to push and grind to get what we want. We don't have to do that. It's these little tiny pivots, these 1% just like needle mover things that we can start to do and be consistent with and intentional with every single day. And so that's what I want for us. I don't want us to be sitting there kind of hating ourselves anymore because I've done that. It doesn't work. I'm telling you it does not work. I want us to use science and use neuroscience, use the science behind habit development to actually achieve kind of the lifestyle changes that we want. So guys, keep going all in on this. Have a good one.